Hey, this is Hayden from Connect. Thanks for tuning in. So this, this video, I'm going to talk about how to use um, a date slicer and to be able to filter multiple columns on dates. Um, the, reason, the reason that this is important is if you take a look at the example on screen, I have um, an order year month. So that's based off the order data, the order date within that table of shipping information. Yeah. And I've got a slicer here on the left that will allow me to select that data. But I can only have one slicer on the screen. If I wanted to have um, visibility of, of this information against the shipping date, the date that the product was shipped or the date that the product was delivered, I can't do that with just this filter. So what I'm going to need to do, I'll give you an example. If I put the shipped year month in to this column here, I've accidentally added it into here. You can see that the order date, 2018 in January, I've got different months. So there's there's no relationship between month and month in those two columns. So first thing I need to do my data model. I need a date table that can that can be independent from these because I don't want to just filter on this date, this date. So to do that, we want to create a new table. Now this create a date table. There's a couple of ways to do this. Um, you can just create a simple calendar table. Just name the table, select new table, and calendar. What we can do here is uh, let's put it 1 1 2020. Two, let's put the 31st of that month just to show you. So that would generate a, a, a table with the dates in it between those two dates. Calendar table there. There you go. So that's a simple way to do that. And from that, I can add a new column. We could call this uh, period. So this could be period, year, month, equals. So we want to format the date, the date in the date table here, and we want that to be year, year, month, month. Made a mistake there. Give the speech marks. And now I need to get rid of that last bracket. And there we go. So you could start to build up all of the date columns you want. What I'm going to show you is a, is a different way of doing that. I'm going to delete this table. You can do that in one. So I have a, have some code um, stored here. Rather than you watch me type this, I'm going to copy this. But I'll, I'll give you a link in the video to where this data is stored on the internet. So what I want to do first of all, so if I go to I want a new table, and I'm going to call this by series. So I can I can create that whole date table in a single DAX um, formula. What I want to do first, though, is I want to understand the start and the end date of my data. So it's important for me that I don't need a date table that goes back to 2016 because my data doesn't go there. So I'm going to set a variable. Yeah, and I'm going to call this the start date equals the min of the order date. So the reason I'm picking order date is because I know that that's going to have the earliest because the sequence of order shipping and delivery. So the minimum of my order date. I'll create a variable. That's the end date. And I'm going to go for the max of my delivery date. Don't have any dates that happen after. Now, once I've done variables, I need to type return to get into the calculation. So, if I jump into this code here, I'll copy and paste this in. So, I need to change my variable names. So, what this is doing, add columns. I'll just indent this. 
shift and enter, and then I just want to format this for you. Okay, so add columns, and it's using the calendar function that we had before. So I'm just going to change this variable to be the start date. Again, just like the last time, we can date. Just like the last time, we could have typed a date range in in um, speech marks there because we use the calendar function. However, add columns, comma. We can put the date as an integer, and you can see predominantly it's using format year. It's all based off the date that's being created in this column. Let me show you what that looks like if I enter. There we go. So if I now bring that up. The start date goes back to the 1st of the 1st, 2018, which is the, the, the date range that I've got my information in. So I've not had to create a guess every time that I import new data into this. This date table will be updated to reflect the start and end dates based off my information. Okay. So that's, that's this video complete. Part two will be showing you how to use that date table to build different relationships in your data model to start to query so I could see for a specific period all of the information. So stay tuned uh, and it'll be up shortly. Thank you.